I want to start this episode off by just saying thank you for uh, supporting me and um, and just to announce that the Netflix airing will be on October 19th. So you can check that out on Netflix. It'll be there soon. I appreciate your love and support. I appreciate anybody that supported me in my comedy career. And, um, and I'm grateful for you guys to see this. It's been a lot of hard work and... Uh, a lot of you guys have come out over the years and, and watched me work it, and so here we are. That's October 19th on Netflix. Get that hitter. I want to thank Liquid Death for being a part of my life. Oh, the irony. I want to let everybody know that um, tickets are going on sale now for a show in Coachella, California. That's right. That's where it is. You've heard it. It's a music town. Coachella, California at Spotlight 29 Casino. And that's uh, Saturday, December 4th, 2021. Um, and those tickets available at theovon.com slash tour. As well, we got dates in Wilkes Bar, PA, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Charleston, Baltimore, Burlington, Vermont, Albany, and Buffalo, New York's. Those are all available, theovon.com slash tour. Um, we have other places as well, but those are the places that still have tickets available. The new Out of Gas Tees collection. They got new items on there. Theovon.com slash store. Check it out if you'd like to see that. If you've run out of gas a lot like me, then you might want to have something to wear while you're out there waiting for the AAA or for the gas friend. Today's guest... Um, He's changing the game up himself. Other people have claimed to do it, but I really see it with this man. Uh, he's a real humorous man, and he's probably one of the, I mean, he's just, he's just one of a kind, really, and he really is that. And uh, he's got a special Out to Lunch that's available on YouTubes, and he's got uh, his podcast Tuesday with Stories that he co-hosts with Mr. Joe List. Um, I'm happy to have him here today in our Central East studio, Mr. Mark Normand. Dude, well, thank you for uh, coming in, bro. Good to see you, man. Of course, of course, good, of course. Good to be here. I um, I was just over at um, Mark Norman, ladies and gentlemen. Are we on? We're, on. We're cooking. We're on. Oh boy! All right, cut that last thing out. <laughs> I was just at the dang. Uh, I was over at uh, Walgreen. You got Walgreen over there in New York City? Oh yeah, we got a CVS, Walgreen, Rite Aid. You yeah. name it. And they had, I was in line, and they're like, make sure to tag us on your social medias. And it <laughs> literally just blew my brain out of my freaking wiener, man. Because it was like, who is going to like, you know, got my cancer meds or whatever, you know, like. Yeah. No, having fun in the parking lot, CBS. <laughs> it just seemed, it's just crazy how everything is like hashtag, like I just know. like. It's all connected. It's all weird. It's. Sometimes though you gotta you gotta admit those guys are funny on Twitter. Like Wendy's will go off on some guy. Oh yeah, fun. yeah. If Wendy's and Arby's go off, dog, I'm there for that. Oh yeah, because you, you know there's just some fat guy behind a desk and he's just like, <laughs> ah, screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be myself, just with the face of Wendy's. Yeah, man. Wendy's used to be so good. Oh, man. the square burger, baby. Dave Thomas, God. chili. Remember? I loved when it was chili. chili was their thing. That Remember was their thing. That was their thing. And you get the big potato, you pour the chili on yeah. it, then you some girl was like, "What? Where'd you learn that?" Then she'd blow you. It was a, it was a great time. Yeah. And your family was doing great. It's like, "We're here." <laughs> yes. You know? It it felt like, you know, you go to rallies or McDonald's, it felt a little low brow, but Wendy's felt a little yeah. upscale. You kind of jumped out the car. Yeah. Like dad is a good guy. Oh. <laughs> you know, like you'd have all these crazy vibes. Yeah, know? I mean, he, he still hit me, but uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it was at the salad bar, so felt classier. 
Dude, I remember too. Pizza Hut salad bars oh, used yes. to have that pudding on them. Remember? Oh, the chocolate pudding. Yeah. That was big. Can't believe they did it. That's after Little League games. It was all yeah. Pizza Hut all day. Oh, it was so good, man. I remember getting a personal pan. You're like, Jesus Christ. I yeah. got my own personal pan. I'm yeah. doing pretty good. Who read two books, you know? <laughs> remember that? <laughs> yeah. Remember the book club, man? We were smart. We'd be in there. We were like a real coupon family. Oh, me too. My what? mom was at Crazy Coos with the uh, with the clippings at the end, and she's like, "Hold on, I got one." You're like, "Come yeah. on, you, you crazy whore! We, yeah. we gotta get we gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah. We gotta I got a blockbuster. I'm ready to." Yeah, no wonder open. Dad's gone. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. wait around either. Because you gotta save six cents on uh, you know, some ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. Do you think like people's the that patience has changed? Like, oh yeah, isn't it? It's almost it's almost it's almost crazy how much it's changed. It's embarrassing. Like, I'll be at a red light, and I'm like, I better look at my phone. Right. I can't make it the eight seconds before I cross the street. I'm like, well, I got downtime. Might as well tweet something. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, who's running this red light? Is this like, you know, it's almost like, you're almost like, this red light needs to get its shit together, kind of, it feels like. Like, right. it, um, or just like, why, you know, every little bit of, everything feels like, things didn't used to feel like wasted time. It used to feel like, Nice. Yeah. To have some moments, I think. That's true. Yeah. Or you just didn't think of it as wasted time. I'm just trying to walk it through just, it. It was life. It was just, uh, oh, yes. I'm, I'm doing life. I'm, I'm outside. I'm living. Yeah. And now it's like, wait, I could be doing something. This could be a TikTok. Oh, the white right. guy's flashing. Now the hand. That could be a thing. Yeah. I'll put music to it. You're like, what am I doing? We're not living. And Instagram went down a couple of days ago, and there was a part of me like, I hope it doesn't come back. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, you remember that in Louisiana? I know growing up, a lot of storms come through there, dude. A lot of storms, mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, missing teeth. A lot of people missing DNA. Remember they had they had one guy there. They found he didn't have any DNA in his body. This was like fourteen years what? ago. What I missed yeah. that guy. They could they couldn't genome sequence him or something. Well, yeah. hopefully he's not a serial killer because he'll get away oh, with it. Oh, I'm sure. Look, if you if the, if God gives you that gift, bro, <laughs> you better buy a hatchet. Yeah, That's no doubt about it. Um. But I remember when the power would go out at our house, dude, we would get into, it was like the only time our family was kind of close. Yeah, same with the Scrabble. The candles came out. Yeah. You had to talk to your brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird. God, it Good was point. so weird. It was so, yeah, but I love, there's almost something kind of cool about it. Like it was a, your family became a little bit of a necessity because you were scared kind yes. of. Yes. You didn't know, like, if it, the second anybody left the candle, it was like, "What happened to him?" You know, <laughs> so true. We had to be Amish for a minute. Yeah, yeah and yeah. it makes you maybe the Amish are tight. Yeah, you I bet the Amish are pretty tight. I saw some Amish at the airport uh, the other what? day. What? Yeah, they're not waiting. allowed in there. I think there's a. Can Amish fly? Will you look that up, Spencer? Do you mind? I they I think some of them can fly. I don't know if they. Uh, you might have to be a high school graduate. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure what their sense. like what the jurisdiction is on being able to fly or not. Yeah, it's, I mean it's all electric, so the Amish are not permitted. I'd imagine they can't. Can you zoom in on that a little if you can? I think they're all banging each other, by the way. Wow! So they don't need to fly. That's hearsay. Uh, that's what I've <laughs> I've been reading in the uh, the Amish newsletter. We use trusted English neighbors. Are not permitted to travel airplane. Oh well, these guys must have been. They're rule breakers. You know, there was a um. I remember that show Breaking Amish, right? Yes. And there was one of the guys. He's like cutting the grass with that little, with the just the spinning knife. Yeah, I remember we had one of those. And they interview him, and he's like, "Man, I got I was adopted. I'm not even fucking supposed to be Amish, dog." <laughs> it was like, <laughs> oh my god, I never saw that one. God, TLC is just a misery channel it's like my 600 pound life i'm a midget i'm an amish yeah. i'm getting surgery it's a bummer over there yeah i wonder why they th they really tapped into that market i guess huh? i don't have any legs someone else yeah. has my legs <laughs> yeah. have you seen that show it's like no. somebody took yeah they said they uh it's like people harvesting organs or something wow um yeah it's really out on a limb yeah all right how's uh how's comedy in new york right now what's it like are you it's, in the city? I am. I live in Manhattan, and uh, the clubs are great. It's all open. you got to show the Vax card to get in. But uh, I'll, I'll say this. The, what isn't the same, when I moved to New York, there was all these hot 
bar shows and alternative shows, and those are all gone. Really? I don't think comics get along anymore. You know, comedy's so splintered now. You know, you got this group, you got that group, and everything's politicized, and what side are you on, and all that shit. And, you know, there's like these teams now, and it's it's not good. Like when you say team, like it is it so it's like, does it feel political? Does it feel like... Or just like if you're not woke enough, does it feel? I'm just trying to. Yeah, a little think, of everything, a little right. of all that, and you got to fall into your tribe a little bit now. I mean, the whole country's going this way, so yeah. I don't know. People were different before; we all had our differences, but like everybody got along. You made it work. There was no internet as much. I mean, there was, but it wasn't like everything. Because people let all their bullshit out online, and then you don't you don't see people face to face as much. And I think people are just separating more. Yeah. Yeah, I think I started feeling recently like, you know, especially during like a lot of the, I guess, election stuff. And then especially during like B, when BLM really went off. Oh, yeah. Because I used to feel like we're all on the same team. We're all trying to do our best and everybody, you know, this is what we're doing. This is like America and it's just like how we're, you know, we're trying our best. Yeah. And then I felt like everything felt like... um some some of the BLM stuff to me almost felt like a like supremacy like it wasn't mm-hmm. like about a, everybody anymore like it wasn't and it wasn't even just about black people it was just like people wanted to exercise like uh victimhood maybe some victimhood but supre- it was just like I don't know everything started really fragmenting then like yeah. for me I thought oh we're all on the same team and then it was now like Oh well, just it's just about these this group and this group and uh, right. and for me, I think maybe for some people it had it had never been that Black Lives Mattered or that, but for me, I think it always had been. So that, to to me, I was just part. like, well, I, I if I, and in some points, and this is just me as a white person, right? Yeah, it almost felt like um, not an attack on me, but it felt like it didn't feel like there was a safe place for you to go if you were somebody who's like, well, I've always. Right, right. Respected everybody. Like, why do I have to behave any? Why do I have to like show a certain, be a certain way now or uh-huh. something? I um, get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, it. I'm never. We grew up in Louisiana. You know, it was just it was mixed. Everywhere was mixed, and it. I never even it never came across my mind that black people didn't matter. Right. So when everybody's like they matter, you're like, yeah, I know. And yeah. then they get mad at you for not doing a bunch of shit. You're like, but I've been. A good guy the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? that was the thing. There was no card to show that you've been right. a good guy, the, and there was nobody that seemed like they wanted to believe that you'd been a good guy the whole time. Yes, yes. I think that's a it's a human nature thing. They get to yell at you, so they feel better, right? You know, this this white lady's like, "Hey, you're not doing enough," and where's your black square? And you're like, I- "I'm I'm I'm banging a black chick. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's never enough." Yeah, and they that but that's their own shit. They got some internal stuff, and they want to take it out on you. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think I don't know. It's just interesting because at the same time, we've all been really separated. Like we have all been in our own little holes. Mm. Like podcasting has become like so grateful. I'm sure that you, oh yeah, that you have uh, Tuesday with stories and uh, just like that everybody has their own cast. It's yeah. like at least you have your own kind of channel now. Yep. Um, you got to build your island now. Yeah. Why it does feel like that a little bit? I guess. Mm-hmm. Which I. Everybody can have their own thing. The internet is is big and vast, and it's got room for everybody. But when people start attacking people, that's what bugs me. Yeah, you know, like you can have your thing, and and Theo can have his thing. But when people come at your thing, I'm like, why? What do we do? There's enough for everybody, right? That's bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, that's bandwidth. We got a um, we got Sorry. a question right here. I want to think. Uh, I want to think a little bit more about this. I'm not good sometimes. Some people are great at thinking and talking at the same time <laughs> when i meet somebody like that like if i watch like a ben shapiro or like a um uh jordan peterson mm. somebody whose brain like it's almost like their mouth is like a little before their brain that's impressive it's like a wizard i know grand wizard yeah. i'm the exact opposite i'm like my i'm just faking it yeah and then i'm hoping <laughs> yeah, my brain yeah, catches yeah, yeah. up you know i'll just keep talking then maybe it'll Pop in. Yeah, yeah, that's how I am too. Here's a white guy. Yeah, fuck piece up. of shit. <laughs> Honky. Theo, Mark. Um, know you guys have similar backgrounds, uh, both Louisiana boys, and both grew up in uh, primarily black neighborhoods. 
just curious, what was the best part about being one of the only white kids <laughs> in a black neighborhood? Gang, gang. Yeah, the, baby, thanks for the question, man. I appreciate it. Definitely the snacks. We had Ooh. better snacks at our house. Did you? Well, we had orange slices and, uh, you mm. know, healthy shit. But do you think that that came, that came from being in a black neighborhood? Well, just in comparison, I'd go to my friend Eddie's house, and it was just like uh, shit I'd never seen before, like weird brands and bags of cereal. Right. Well, like we a, had Dunkaroos and some Like a hat bulls. full of heart meat or something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, gizzards or whatever the fuck that is. But no, but I'm just saying, what, like, I think his question is like, what do you think was, what was it, what was interesting about it? He said, what was the, one of the perks of being the one of the white kids? I showed a lot of kids how to skateboard. Okay, so there you go. I think that would be a real perk. So you had better snacks. Yeah, I think so. So you, you got to show kids how to skateboard. I'm trying to think. I had, a, I had cable. I had Nintendo. This black kid would come over and play on our Nintendo. He was unbelievable. It was like really? a, something I'd never seen. And me and my brother were like in awe of this kid. He would just go to town on that Nintendo with with Mario. He could jump up. Remember when you had to jump on the flagpole at the end of Mario and slide? He could get to the top. Killed oh him. wow! Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. I think they have extra muscles in their fingers. I think so. That's what I heard. Anyway, did you hear that growing up in Louisiana that black people have extra muscles in their body? Quick twitch. They would yeah. always say they got the quick twitch. Yeah. And uh yeah, it, it it was true. I mean, you try to play soccer with this one guy in my neighborhood and I think he was Haitian or something. So yeah. he was just he was black and Haitian. So oh, that's yeah. already two Double levels. entendre. Yeah, yeah. I think that was his name, Entendre. Oh yeah. yeah. Entendre. We had an Entendre <laughs> Wilson too at our school. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of some of the highlights. Some of the highlights I remember were that other white kids at school, you knew some black kids. Mm -hmm. So it was like you had a little bit more like my white friend. My white friends didn't really know the black kids. Oh, that's so good. you could be like a liaison at times. Yes. At, at least you got a little bit of like more respect if you were like talking to the black kids. Yeah, like yeah. You could be over there. You could kind of joke around. You could have a little bit more um, room with the black kids. Mm hmm. Um, that was the other kid. Uh, that was Entendre's brother. Was liaison. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right. You had it was good to be dip your toe in both pools. Yeah. You know, you knew a little, a little of both, both cultures. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what else the other highlights were. Uh, yeah, you got to be able to joke. You got to try a little bit more humor on a crowd that you knew yes. was a little bit. It was a little tougher. You got to, I mean, sometimes you got to even, you you didn't get to say the N word. I don't remember what the rules were back then, but you got to like joke around about it. Yes. Like you just got to be in more circle. People would call you the N word. Yes. You'd be like, yeah, I that, did it. That was a great moment. Oh, yeah. God. I remember that, going home and telling my mom, man. <laughs> She's like, don't say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that was big. And also, it's weird because we use the term minority a lot for certain groups, but like in my neighborhood, I was the minority. You, right. you go 10, 10 miles this way, I'm not, but in my neighborhood I was, so I felt like you got some leeway. Yeah. You were like, you know, you ever do an all-black show and you're the white guy? Yeah. You stand out. You, you're the novelty. You pop. And uh, they would let me pop in this in this group. It feels scary. Doing an all-black show feels scary, though. Yeah. It's a different, it's a different ball game because uh, I feel like they're more real, and they, they kind of will not – if you're bombing, they're just, they, they're – fine with letting you bomb and if you kill they will let you know you're killing but there's not much middle ground you never do okay with a black crowd oh it's interesting you're the murdering or boo yeah it's very uh game of jerome's kind of you know <laughs> yeah and that's exactly. a weird statement really but it's like very like game that. of thronesy it's you know? coliseum like it's very alive. coliseum because if not and black people are always eating at their show yeah so if not if it's not good they will eat and you hear that that oh, smack. Oh yeah, the, you yeah. hear the silverware. Ooh. A lot of heavy-handed mamas out there, and they, you know, <laughs> some woman two spooning through some fucking through a damn uh, half a dove or something. Right. You know, you're like, damn, right. you don't even have a knife. <laughs> I'm doing a horrible. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. And and sometimes there's jewelry clanking. They got oh, a lot of crazy yeah. jewelry, bling. I think I don't know if there's anything tougher probably than doing. 
a, I don't, not tough. It definitely, if you had some luck with it, then it, you'd be fired up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Best feeling in the world. Yeah. Killing for a black room. But it's easy to kill if you play up the white guy. I think if you go up and go, I remember one time I did one in Harlem and yeah. they played some rap song to bring me out. And I was like, never heard that song before. And they're like, ah, he's so white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was too easy. And I remember going back and being like, I'm not going to do the white thing. And I bombed. Yeah. So. It was. Uh, I remember I got up one time and even just said, "What's up, my n words?" Even on stage. Oh, that's good. And they went nuts, man. Yeah. You didn't. You said n word. You didn't say the word. I said the real word. You said the real word. Yeah. Whoa, that's balls. This is back when you could kind of do. I, don't, I mean, you couldn't. You weren't supposed. But it was just a moment. It's like that's one thing about comedy, though. Yeah. It's like there's times where it's like if you. It used to be anyway. If you felt a certain thing. Yep. And you could trust that instinct. It was That's real so scary. So true. So true. It was. It was like somebody fucking. It's almost like Satan lit a little fuse in the distance. Yes. And you just start to see it freaking boiling. That's so. And that would happen every now and then because hitting on a girl is so scary. I'm. I'm. I'm with a lady now, but in the single days, every now and then you get that devil's spark right in the taint and you it would just work with a girl you had the balls yeah. you had the confidence and she ate it up and then sometimes it fell flat but it's the same thing with comedy every now and then you get that little twinkle of jizz in your eye and it just works yeah What's yeah my man words? those were good stuff man and that was also before like a hinchcliffe day you know no one had a phone out so you right. saying that was like a magic thing in the in the moment that's the that's the point that's the point. Mm-hmm. You used to be able to ride the moment. Yes. And now the moment isn't there. No, no, no. You're the just worried. The moment is to be something that is to be either monetized later or judged later. Yep. Or the moment is, uh, the moment doesn't exist really. That's true. Like the, the value of it or, uh, I don't know, what is it? I'm trying to think about it. I know exactly what you mean. It was a... a a weird spark in the air between you and this group at that time, yeah. and then it's gone. And that's really what comedy was, kind I of. I know. Like. Yeah, Bill Bird talked about he went to that Chappelle compound, and he said all the phones are locked up, and he just said crazy shit, and he forgot, like, oh, this is what it used to be. Wow. And it hit him, you know, like how much stand-up has changed and how it's all video, and Daniel Tosh makes a joke, it's on the news, you know, and that's not supposed to be it. It's supposed to be in a basement and just... Right here, right now. Yeah. Dude, I remember John Mayer one time mm. who, uh, who's so tiny. He like, I'm, he's a, his brain is like a brain I'm way jealous of. Really? Yeah, he just has that like, I mean, it's like, uh, he just has a, just a gifted, he's gifted in that freaking top sack. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? But he, um, handsome fella too. He got on stage one night at the comedy store, right? And he did some jokes, and it was good. It was good stuff. It was smart. Mm-hmm. And it's him. You got to hear his voice. You got to hear him think, like kind of see how he thinks a little. Mm-hmm. And then I want to say it was a few days later. Oh, he talked about on stage. He goes, it's interesting because I can talk about things tonight, but it's but I can't really talk about things. He, he's like, because I make a joke tonight, something in this moment, three days from now. I'm having a sandwich with my mom somewhere two weeks from now. I'm sitting down to dinner with a friend, and this is going to pop up on something's going to pop up on TMZ, yep, yep. and they're going to have framed it how they want, yep. and it's going to ruin that moment for me completely. Um, and I just I just remembered I, I remembered also just thinking what it was like if you were already so famous and one thing that yeah. you couldn't even try something else. I know, and the the, the crazy thing is. Everybody loves the moment. Everybody wants the moment. But a couple of queefs have to ruin it for everything. Yeah. And now we can't have these moments. Yeah. Queef Latina, dude. Yeah. That was my improv group in college. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, it's true. Queef Latina. <laughs> That's the name of the app right there. Yeah, it is, dude. <laughs> look, look, real facts. The holiday's coming up. Pumpkin time coming up. Everybody coming up, coming up. Make it up, make it up. What I'm talking about is ship station, baby. You want to get rid of something, you're selling reefs. You're selling Christmas reefs, baby reefs, baby combs. That's the new thing. Every baby needs a comb. You see a baby without a comb, you say, damn, how are we going to really stay quaffed as he ages? Yep, between growing your business, managing inventory, and juggling orders, you got a lot going on this holiday season. Make shipping uh, the easiest part of your day with ship station. 
Look, I've used ShipStation, man. If you want to ship something, ship, 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 ship station. Ship it. The easy use. The money you save is save the money. Make it easy. Why are you messing around? You got all this tape. You at your mom's house taping up a damn box. And you ain't even got you on the Uber over there. Damn, you do you screwing around. That's right. Easy to import orders from any sales channel. That's right. Use UPS, USPS, all the carriers. They do it all. It's never too early to start prepping for the holiday rush. So get a head start with ShipStation. My listeners can use the offer code THEO to get that 60-day free trial. That'll get you almost through the holidays. Yep. Do it. Learn it. It's two months of stress-free holiday shipping. That's it. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top and enter code THEO. ShipStation.com makes ship happen. Autumn's in the air. Pumpkin's in the patch. You know it. These pumpkins are patching, fam. I saw a pumpkin the other day with an eye patch on. I said, dang, they going, they doing. That's what I'm telling you about Manscaped. It's holiday season. Get that, get that, get, trim that hair off your front arm, homie. That's right. Make sure you keep it things fresh this fall. Get it right. What if your mother walks in on you and you're naked? You want to look well. Yep. I've uh, recently trimmed up my crotch and body, and I'm happy to do it, and I enjoy doing it. Manscaped, they're offering it all right now. Join the 2 million men worldwide using Manscaped by going to manscaped.com slash Theo for 20% off and free shipping. It's the fourth generation performance package. Man, there's no other way to do it. There really is no other way to do it. Go to manscaped.com slash Theo for 20% off and free shipping. That's manscaped.com slash T-H-E-O for 20% off and free shipping. Support this damn podcast and do well by yourself. Your granddaddy's getting old. Get him that trimmer, man. Trim his old ass up. You want him looking shorn for the Lord, don't you? Treat each other well. Woo. Yeah, but it, it everybody likes the moment, but a couple of people are keep ruining shit. It's funny. It's funny. Do we do we It's interesting to think about cuz I never really squared it down to that's what it is. That's what's not available. That's what's not the mo- it's just not um Man, I can't understand. I can't understand what I'm trying to say. I know what you mean. I'm trying to be supportive. I think that's yeah. why these YouTube videos, these YouTube specials are so cool because it feels kind of like real. I know you're doing a Netflix. Congrats. Well, I'm envious, though, honestly, because you're because you're YouTube. I was talking to your agent a couple of weeks ago, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. And he loves you. Absolutely. And, uh, and he should. But the one thing we we're talking about was he mentioned that um, he said, well, you know, what's really happening right now is Mark Norman special is really popping Hmm. And I think that was a break. He'd never used that word before. And I could tell when he said it. Uh, okay. Uh, but anyway, he said, no, he was just really like, you know, he said it's really doing something for him. I mean, I even noticed you're adding shows. You're adding afternoon shows now. Yeah, yeah, that felt good. Do you feel like this is something um, that has, this has been like a real mover of, of the sticks for you? Uh, the, the, the YouTube? The YouTube oh, special, yeah. 100%. Game changer. I mean, I couldn't get a thing cooking. Nobody would have me. And then I put that out, and it did well. And people were like, oh, who's this guy? I'm like, I'm the same fucking guy. Right. That's the special I tried to give you, HBO or, or Oxygen or whoever. And uh, they all said, no dice, dickless. And then you put it on <laughs> YouTube, and they're all in. And now do they want to buy it or no? Have they been actually – well, I guess it's already out, but has there yeah. been – now there's talk of like, what's the next thing? And I'm like, right. God, it sucks. Some some people have just proved themselves where other people just get shit. Oh, yeah. But well, that's, that's Judaism you're talking about. <laughs> but we're not saying that. But, yeah, yeah. But it's obviously it's written down somewhere. Yeah. But um, but no, I agree with you, man. It's like, uh, but then also it's like, I used to think that way, man. And I think sometimes I still probably do. But, um, but then it's like, I notice I used to want stuff. Mm-hmm. When I wasn't really ready for it. Oh, that's that's every comic. 
We want it all. Yeah, you're like four years in, yeah. dude. You're 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 like going on the. You're like going first on a show that Bill Burr is supposed to pop in at, <laughs> and you're just like, "Fuck, man, yeah. I should be where he is." Oh Holmes. yeah, Venezuela was our dad's name, Richie. <laughs> you know, like you're out there just fucking. You're quoting La Bamba, like you're into it. Yeah, uh, but it's not true, and then it all happens when it's kind of supposed to happen. I think. Um, I agree. Yeah, and that's that's the. Everybody goes, what advice do you have to young comics? It's, no, you suck. No, you're not ready. You think you're ready, but you're not, and get better. Yeah. Because you think you're there, but you're not there. It's like when the fat guy goes, I should be fucking Heidi Klum. And you're like, why would she fuck you? Yeah. But you got to get there. Yeah, you got to get there. You got to get outdoors. You got to walk. You got to get your breathing up. You yep. got to really, you got to change that shirt. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, But that's crazy. You're adding shows. Now, has this happened before? I mean, I know it's I know it's been kind of happening, but like, has it been like like what have you noticed? What has been some things that have been different? Uh, well, the social media goes up, and then people. It's almost like high school where you no one really talked to you. Then you get a cool car, and they're kind of like, "Hey, well, come eat lunch with us there." Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, oh, wow, okay." And it's nice, but you gotta. That's what's cool about stand up or any art form, I guess. Is uh, you gotta stay funny. You gotta stay good. You know, yeah. you can't just join the cool kid table and then just not change. You got to still keep progressing, I think. Right. It's a meritocracy, kind of. What does that mean? What does it mean, a meritocracy? Like, good quality stuff wins instead of just being the hot guy, the popular guy. It's right. actually, you know, like sports are a meritocracy. The, the guy who made the most touchdowns, they win. Right. You know? Yeah, I remember being je real jealous or uh, like when I was doing comedy earlier of certain guys and be like, man, they and then it's like now it's like I'm grateful to be where I'm at. You yeah. Know? Um, you got to be grateful because how many of those E! True Hollywood MTV Unplugged where they go, I, I'm a millionaire. I live in a mansion. I'm banging a supermodel. Uh, my kid is in the honor roll and they're still yeah. miserable. Yeah. So you got to everything. The fact that I sold out these shows and I'm adding shows, I'm like, oh my god, I'll, I'm happy here for the rest of my life. This is great. I yeah. never thought I'd be here. That's cool, man. You got to be grateful. Yeah, it's so deserved for you too, man. I mean, you've always been like the funniest guy. Oh, I don't know about that. Have you seen uh, Earthquake? <laughs> Actually, dude, Earthquake kills. Beast kills. Dude, some of the guys I never want to follow. I'll name them. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Schultz, the first time I saw him, I was like, I never want to follow that guy. He can really own a room, that guy. Yeah. He's got he's on a he's on the stool and they're just sitting on every word he's saying. Yeah, and I haven't seen him in a few years. It was, this was like when he was this is before he broke, you know, mm -hmm. before he was like getting real popular. Yeah. Um but uh but Earthquake was one. Oh yeah. And um Chris D'Elia was really, really Sure, hard. that's what really I really hard tells to follow. Me that. God, it was hard. And DeStefano is really hard to follow. So man. funny. So funny. Um, and also it's just it's different, like how it flows kind of. Um so the have you set your YouTube into clips as well? Have you put it into yeah. clips? Okay. You gotta have the clips. Yeah. The clips are bite sized, they bring people in, they go, What's this from? Then they watch the whole thing or yeah. And you know how it is. Uh, they say social media is like an IV drip. You just gotta keep going. Yeah. You wanna take the day off, but put something else up. And you own it. You own your special. Oh yeah. See, that's what makes me mad. <laughs> it really does. Really? You yeah. could do it. You could do one tomorrow. Uh, maybe in a year, maybe in like six months I could. I gotta okay. get some more material. But yes. There's but, no money in it. Right, but so well let's say you have I think are you are you getting close to ten million on there? Eight million? What do you Seven have? and a half. Okay. Yeah, so we're getting there. What do you what do you make on ten million views, do you think? Well, accumulated, you get a check every month. So depending on the month, it might be a thousand, might be three thousand. So I've already made because Comedy Central wouldn't take it, and they pay thirty grand. Really? And I've already gone way beyond that. So I was crushed when they didn't buy it, but now I'm like, "Fuck you! I've made more, and I own it." Yeah. Blow yeah. me, CC. Also, yeah. Also, fuck them. Yeah. What did Schumer used to say? She used to always say, "Since we're both right here, right now, you could give Comedy Central a gold brick, and they would bronze it." Ooh, that's good. That's what she used to say. Man. I think she stiffed him for the last year for a show, I think. Even. I think so. I think she was fucking supposed to be yeah. at a show. Yeah, she's got balls. Dude, she's got some freaking hard balls on the top, too. <laughs> nice ones, huh? Yeah, you, you banged her. Well, I mean, I don't know about that, but I mean, I definitely, <laughs> we, I, I, you know, I, I have, I knew her well at sure. a certain point. Yeah, she's, she's a good egg. We got a real beetle crawling on the ceiling here. Watch out, everybody. Can we get a shot of that, Spence? Yeah. Yeah, maybe get it with your phone at least, Spencer. So what happened? Just get it from there if you don't mind. 
I want to be honest about everything that happens in here. I like it. I respect um, it. I like the between two ferns too. You got a, and you got the uh, impeachment curtain behind you. Oh yeah, definitely. This is impeachment. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, this is definitely like if they had a Civil War draft yeah. room. <laughs> yes. Like if Norv Turner were freaking picking infantrymen, <laughs> this would be it, bro. <laughs> like if Frederick Douglass was putting together his fantasy team. Right. Dude, I used to have these dreams that I was doing uh, undercover boss, right? But during slavery, right? So Ooh, I'd have these dreams. That's a great sketch. Oh, it was SNL's so. SNL's going to steal that one. I'd be like, hey, what do we get? Oh, do we have to work today, guys? And somebody would be like, no. And I'd like write it down. <laughs> like, I just remember having these crazy dreams. And Lilac was my name. Lilac. That's nice. It's a Pretty flower. Good. Yeah, Tuskegee. That was something. Pretty good. The airman. Yes. Man, you ever think about war? I don't know if we could do it. I mean, we could go out there and shit in a hole and, and peel potatoes and do some push ups, but. In those trenches with a machine gun, bullets whizzing. Yeah. Woo! Those guys were tough. Yeah, you know what's left a lot of our what's left us has really been that tough. A lot of that toughness. Yeah, because life was precious. It was flimsy. Like you might get drafted. You're 18, 19. Right. You might go off to Germany and and die and never come back. Yeah, polio. Every, I mean, yes. there's just so many things. It was it, life, everything was life and death. They had the fucking the the bombs with Russia with this with the alarms going off. You had to get under your desk. Oh, and now yeah. we're worried about Latinx, you know, like we have so few problems. We got to focus on uh, what's that pronoun, you know, like, yeah, huh? you got to make up stuff. Oh, somebody dropped a her over there. I yeah. heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back then it was like we might die tomorrow. Yeah, I think I miss like uh, it just used to be different. And I don't know if I don't know. I, I just don't even you almost feel like such a um, pawn now. Even mm. if you don't want to, I feel like. Do you How ever so? feel like that? Pawn and what, who's, who's just playing? a pawn, not even and just in like a, a lot of it is just electronica. Mm. Just how much it's like, you know, people are like, I don't want to be tracked, you know, I don't want a website. Oh, but then yeah. like they'll be at the CVS and enter their phone number to yeah, get like six so percent. It's just like there's no escaping the machine. Yeah, we're all in it. It's scary. You know, people have an iPhone. They go, I can't get this. They'll, they'll track me. I'm like, you got an iPhone. They yeah. got your GPS. They got your satellite right there. Yeah, you're fucked. You're fucked. We're all in it. And you can't not be in it. Right. That's the thing. You can't not be in it. They, they're good. They got us by the balls, these guys. They got us by the short and curly. And do you think they are a real group? Do you think this is like, I think, where a lot of people you either... You either go in this way or you Owen Benjamin. You know, it's like, <laughs> who has a new documentary out, too? Is that right? Yep, and oh. I do want to support it, and uh, he sent me a link to it, man, and it is really interesting. Interesting. He sent me a link, you know, and um, uh, and I literally watched 40 minutes of it. Damn, that's pretty good. 40 minutes is, a, is tough nowadays. Yeah. I mean, we got Squid Game to get after, you know? Oh, I'm in the last episode, man, I'm, I'm, and I can't even get hard anymore. <laughs> Your dick's a squid. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> killing me, man. I'm about to blow ink out of it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah, I think, well, I think this is the scary part. I don't want to get all conspiracy uh, Alex Jones QE on you, but. No, it's interesting. It is. something feels weird. Something's weird. Suicide is up. Anxiety is up. Depression's up. It's the corporations. They've and those used us. to be your thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those used yeah, to be, right? Yeah. yeah, now everybody's doing it. But. The corporations are winning. That's kind of the re new religion. That's kind of the we talk about Biden and the president. It's, it's all the corporate. They're the ones in power. Oh yeah. So I forgot my point, but their suicide is up. So we we talk about how we we care about mental health. We care about people's lives. But if the corporations are making money, I think that'll just win. Yeah. That'll beat. No one will care about the the kids killing themselves if the corporations are still thriving. Yeah. They don't pay taxes. It's crazy. The, the whole system is crazy. You can't help but start to feel, I think, I. it used to feel like being human meant a little more, I think. Yo, yeah. There's Wait, now we got bugs two bugs here. that are meeting. And there's one over there, too. Holy hell. Man. And we just got it sprayed in here, didn't we? Yeah, Damn. Back, we got here. Who did the spraying? We got to fire that guy. Man. Wow. That, it, if these guys uh, start fucking. That one definitely... Oh, boy. 
Oh, if they if they do sex, man, I'm it, then this is gonna be pretty good. Yeah, let's, let's go viral. We don't have that on. I mean, yeah, we don't have it on tape, but I'll get. I'll, I'll, <laughs> we gotta get a, a. We'll just we could edit. We could find something. Yeah. We'll edit it in. Or are they about to meet up? Yeah, this, I think so. This is a hot date. We gotta this, get a release for them if yeah, they're gonna this, fuck. This is a drug deal. Oh, oh damn. damn! That was a handoff if I ever seen it. <laughs> yeah, it sure was, huh? Man. Somebody caught that fentanyl and just hit the road, Jack. Huh? <laughs> well, if, if it is fentanyl, then you don't have to worry about the exterminator because they'll be dead. Yeah, hopefully it is, man. Yeah, fentanyl's um, killing everybody. Yeah, it's just weird, man. You can't even do cocaine. It's just everything f- feels tainted a little bit. Yeah, it's kooky times, man. Do you do you really feel like sometimes I can't feel it's like am I just alone in feeling that way or does everybody feel like things seem weird? I think we do because we're a little older now. Yeah, and uh, I think young people just grew up with this shit and they're just it's normal. But right, we I saw a day before uh, you know Pornhub. Yeah, and it might have been a better time. But then that then do I think do I sound like the old guy who's like oh you're out of touch man I'm like maybe I am out of touch but. I don't know. Life felt more normal before. We're too tuned in. We're we know all of the news story. I know everything about the Taliban. I, I can see anal gaping, and and I can buy socks in one sitting. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. It's too. There's no. The imagination. I don't know that my imagination barely even works anymore. Oh anymore. yeah, that's out. I used to use it to jerk off. Oh yeah! Forget about that now. That's over, dude. That's a great point. Yeah. Think about using your imagination, dude. I remember getting a set of pens, like colorful pens, one time for Christmas or something, birthday or Christmas. Mm-hmm. And dude, somebody give me a little. This dude Nikki at our school would draw a piece piece of cooter for you for the weekend, yeah. right? Two dollars. <laughs> wow, really? Oh, this kid could, bro. The labia and everything, Majora, Menorah. Oh, dude, the freaking evil Longora dog. He oh, had all yeah. of it in there. Bro, he had the freaking, uh, I mean, you had the freaking uh, Orion's belt, dude. You sure, had all yeah. this thing, dude. Yeah, yeah. a big glitter. Some healthy ladies yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of good stuff going on in there. He sketched that for you for two bucks. Yeah. You have that thing for the weekend. It was like having a girl, you know? Right. And I remember right. getting my own set of pens and duplicating his thing one time. Oh. Uh-huh. And then kind of having my own deal. But that, yeah, you just used to have your imagination. I remember like drawing tits on a pillow and yes. just calling it Katie, you know? <laughs> and then you put your face right in there. Oh. You to fluff that pillow. And that was my oh. pillow. Yeah. That was with the days. My friend drew women too. And again, it's like the Amish porn. But remember, even in a car ride, you'd play 20 questions or punch buggy. You had to make fun. Right. And now you don't have to make fun because everybody's just on their phone. And everybody's on their phone just doing the same things. It's all just whatever someone who owns whatever the little template is. Mm -hmm. It's just there's no, there's not a lot of even diversity of thought. It's like everybody's getting these ads for untuck it shirts. Right, right, yeah. Everybody's girlfriend will get them one for Christmas and think it's cute. It just starts... But I do wonder, is that just getting older and that every generation thinks that? I know, exactly. These kids with their Beatles music and all that, and their televisions and their eight tracks, like, are we those guys now? Or is this actually a problem? Right. It's hard to, it's hard to know. And if you are, if you are like 18 or something, you don't know it's a problem anyway. You don't know. You don't know any different. It's just normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. We need we need to get like a little tween in here and, and ask him. Well, Trevor Wallace is a he's a oh he's, he's mid twenties phenom. Oh, he's phenomenal. And he's so he's so funny. Great dude. He, he's a cute twink. But he uh oh you take him to you take him to a, a gay area where mm. men with money mm. bidding war. You got that right. Oh, I mean he is adorable. Oh. He is definitely, there he is right there. Look at him. Oh, come on. Not a hair out of place. He looks all oh. German. Cute. He's Jewish too, I think. What? Yeah. Well, T-Wall, baby. I, but I, he could be anything. The guy's so hilarious. going to unfollow him now. But <laughs> Yeah, he could be anything. But here's one thing I was interesting. One night uh, he was talking and he said, dude, he's like, movies, man. Like, they're so long. You yes, know? And yes. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, but me and my friends, we can't sit through a movie. That's like, it wild. seems insane. That's wild. And you can't blame them. 
No. But when it rained outside, you popped that VHS in, oh. you watched Roger Rabbit, and you loved it. And there were no interruptions. There was yes. nothing could interrupt you. And there was like, maybe the phone would ring once. Right, right. There was no fentanyl in the film. There was no... Yeah. You weren't going to get a text message. It was a different time. It was a different time. I'll, I'll try to show my girl. She's younger than me. And oh, that's nice. Is it hard, though, to not make mistakes and say mean? things that make you sound old? Oh, all the time. I'm just giving up. I'm, I'm the old guy. I can't get it up. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, she can't. I'll be like, you got to watch Jaws. Yeah. She's like, well, this is the most boring thing I've ever seen. I'm like, this was a huge movie. It's a classic. She's like, I can't do it. Yeah. Godfather, forget about it. Yeah. She's, she's watching TikTok. And then she'll wait for something to happen in the in Jaws. Yes. And then she'll go back to TikTok when they're when they're just swimming on the beach. So. Yeah, it's almost like there. It's just yeah. It's tough, man. If you'd go on a date with a younger girl, I went on a date and I. She said, "Well, what music? Put, put on some music." I was like, "All right, cool." Just. Uh oh. And I used Apple Music, and she's like, "How old are you?" Uh, that's old now. Oh, Apple? That's old. Apple I was impressed music. with Apple. Me too, but I think it's Spotify. I mean, I think it's just Spotify. Oh damn! You know, I know. It's, I don't even what like do auto Spence. Spotify. Yeah. Ah shit. Damn. I, I've been using a Napster. Yeah. Oh damn! Yeah, yeah. I haven't said that word in 25 years. By oh, the way, dude. that came yeah. right out of my asshole with cobwebs oh, on it. Like it. Remember Napster, bro? That was big. Remember Zillow or what? No, not Zillow. Uh, there was one with a Z. Shit. It was green. And it, it came with all kinds of viruses. Oh. Uh, Damn. Maybe it wasn't a Z. Z uh, rip. There was cur uh, current. There was, oh, yeah. That rip might have current, been current, something. Rip current. Lime? No. That's Lime scoot. wire? Lime wire that was, was something. That was something, yeah. What was that? That was like Napster. That was big. Remember, you're like, oh, my God, I found Oasis on here. Yeah. It would take you four hours. You finally found Wonderwall yeah. for free, yeah. <laughs> and you already owned it. And it took a week to download it. Napster. Wonder whatever happened to the Napster guy. He would be a great guest on a podcast. Oh yeah. And is he rich? Is he living under a bridge? Is he suicidal? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching, looking at porn, and my friend was like, "We should print it out." So he used all his dad's printer ink, and he was going, ree, ree, ree. Oh. and then we print it out, and we'd have to peel that bullshit holes off the side, you know, yeah, yeah. Per perforated or whatever. And I would keep it in my pocket, and I remember mowing the lawn at my grandmother's house, and every now and then I'd go, all right, oh, yeah. and then I'd go back to mowing the lawn. Still got it. Still got it. God. Do you notice your ego changing any as you get a little bit more kind of like, do you? And because ego is a weird thing. Ego is yeah. like a thing that happens without our even. It's this crazy monkey that lives inside of you. Totally. You know? Do you notice yourself? Do you have any, like, kind of moments where, you, like, you start to notice your own behaviors changing or not? You may not. It's a great question. I, I think with some comics, like the the guy inside you, the little gnome that lives inside you, he's such a loser and an insecure dweeb that I'll never be able to be, you know, like Chappelle, you can tell he kind of knows he's hot shit. And uh, I think what changed for me is the comfort. You know, you go, hey, I flew this this level, Delta Comfort. It's tough to go back. Yeah. You know, or you ever have this one? This might have been an L.A. thing, but you do the road. You're killing it in some club. You're sold out. All your people are there. Gang, gang. They love you. And then you go to some club to do 10 minutes in L.A. or or, or here, and they're kind of like, eh, that wasn't bad. And you're like, yeah. what? I've been murdering all week. But they love you. They know you. And then here, you're just another comic. Yeah. So that's a good check. Yes, yeah, I agree. That's one good thing about comedy is that there's with uh with the fact that you have to keep practicing that there's those checks, you know. Yeah. Um, you need it. Some things do get a little more comfortable, but I do think you deserve it as a comedian. That's true. Like That's being able true. to fly first class or something, it's like at a certain point it's just like or flying the same airlines, you're able to get yes. the miles and do it that way. Yes. That's one thing Bert Kreischer told me a long time ago. He's like, just fly one airline. I promise you just fly the same airline. I know, but I'm such a Come guzzler that I'm like, well, the spirits eleven cents oh. cheaper, so maybe I'll go with that. And then you you're sitting on wicker, you know, oh, yeah, it's brutal. You're eating, uh... yeah, and you just met her, you know, <laughs> Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's a it's a black girl that wants to be it's a white girl that wants to be black that also wants to be outdoor furniture. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I saw two dogs fight on a Spirit Airline Whoa. one time. Yeah. And Damn. I heard the beef in the line when they were doing the check-in ticketing. 
you could see a little they you know you could see them beefing a little yeah. and then they fucking let them loose i and they were video i almost think they did it for like a tiktok oh that's a great tiktok and michael vicks uh, cheering them on yeah but that's that just shows that service dogs are bullshit. They're oh. supposed to be like anxiety and all this, but like if we got two of them fighting, that yeah. just increases the anxiety. Oh yeah, this one was definitely one of them was really white, kind of like lean but confident. It kind of like uh, Jack Shore. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's a UFC guy. But, no, uh, I don't know Jack. I like UFC, but I don't know Shore. What's the difference? You bring here? him he up. A little interracial. Uh... There he is, right there. Good mate. I don't know Jack Shore. Mate. He just actually he sent me a jersey. I should have uh, I should have worn it. I'll wear it next time. What do you know about this Patty Patty Pemberton? Oh yeah, Patty Pemberton. He's like the Beatles' little freaking. He's like if any of the Beatles looked good, it would be him. <laughs> Dude, the Beatles were not attractive, no, right? No, they were they're British queefs. I mean, okay. they're they're ugly. They're like B-Q's. working class uh, <laughs> BQs. Yeah. Oh, there he is, Patty Pemberton. Yeah, he's 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 the guy popping right now. Is he going to oh, the Irish? Patty Pimlet. There he is. Oh yeah, look at him. He looks like if you look at that one pitcher next to Bisping and uh-huh. on the third row, the third pitcher. Yeah, he looks like a Cabbage Patch Kid, dude. Uh, uh. Who fucking's finally getting revenge for all the people just hugging him and pissing on him at night? <laughs> oh, I know. I pissed on mine and the wrestling buddies. Oh yeah. See, this shows that like confidence and being like. Uh, just self-assured goes a long way. The guy's got weird hair. He's a little guy. He's got blue eyes. He's pale. But he looks, he seems cool. He, he owns it. Well, it's that whole 6 9 vibe. It's that mm. whole thing of like, if I can be confident enough and just say, fuck you, here I am, yeah. then I can win. But I wonder, does that work for everyone? Good question. That's what I wonder. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like Ted Bundy, they say... He was so handsome, so confident. Yeah. He was picking up all these gals in the 70s. And he did card tricks, too. you know that? What? I did not know that. Isn't that like, crazy? To hit on a girl? Yeah. Not a bad idea. But you wouldn't think that a murderer would be doing card tricks, I feel like. It seems like the total... I'm sure like other murderers like, oh, look at this pussy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Look at this magician. I know. Oh, he uses magic to murder? Uh, it's what a hack. Yeah, he's a prop guy. Yeah. I think though, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think women will not admit it, but they're they're turned on by magicians. They won't admit really? it, but I think ladies are like, "Oh, that David Blaine, I'll tell you." Urbanista, urbanista. That's something I'm telling you about today. It's about, you know, you want the look and feel of city life. You want the look and feel of of a real culture when you're wearing headphones. And that's Urbanista, sleek wireless earbuds with a new and improved dual mic for an immersive, clear audio experience. Yep, it's active noise canceling reduces unwanted sound with a superior precision. While the new ambient sound mode will uh, enforce and define outside voices without the need to lower the volume or hit pause. It's basically... The the most enlightened folks you know have created headphones. This is out of Stockholm, Sweden, Europe. 2010, they made these bad. They made this bad batch, and I love them, Jeepers! I put them on. I feel like I'm in. If I'm listening to the blues, I feel like I'm listening to them in Memphis. If I'm listening to some soul, I feel like I'm listening to it in New Orleans, and that's what Urbanista does. It's just their couture of the actual headphones and earbuds. It's unprecedented. Right now, Urbanista has a special offer for TPW listeners. Go to urbanista.com slash Theo. Get 20% off your entire order. That's the whole batch. 20% off everything. You'll even get free shipping for all orders over $60. Go to urbanista.com slash Theo for 20% off. That's urbanista.com slash Theo. For many people in the U.S. of America concerned about the cost of health insurance, there are no good options. There's none. Zilcho. But Crowd Health is a community of people who are tired of paying for a broken system. Yep. It's a place where you can get a simple, flexible, and affordable way to pay for your health care. Crowd Health is able to offer amazing prices because of its community of health-conscious members. For a limited time, our listeners get their first month free. 
And after you've been a member, Crowd Health will include a fitness wearable. That's 30 days to try risk free plus the fitness wearable. Just go to crowdhealth.com slash fit and enter code Theo at sign up. Enter that code, baby. You want to get that crowd health. You want everybody helping you, breathing into your lungs. You want that CPR. You want that damn uh, Heimlich. You want it all. And that's crowdhealth.com slash fit. Promo code Theo. Yep, crowd health is not health insurance. It's a community-powered alternative. Terms and conditions apply. If you're sick of big health insurance and the BS that goes with it, go to Crowd Health. Go to joincrowdhealth.com slash fit and enter code Theo. Learn about it, Crowd Health. I, yeah, I wonder. I think, cause it, I think that falls in with the thing that women wants to be murdered, really. Ah, I think you got something there. My lady loves all that murder, yeah. um, like fake, you know, hold you down and put a ski mask on and yeah, all that shit. Brian Laundry, all that stuff with that yes. man they're looking for. That everybody, all these chicks want to bang that guy. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird fetish these ladies have. It's all, it's all murder all the time. They love murder. Do you think that? And also, we're not gonna have any good murderers anymore. That's done. I mean, oh, you can even that's see. Over. That's, I mean, there's just too much digital footprint. Yeah. I just can't believe Laundry's still on the lam, even with Dog the, the N-Word bounty hunter on his tail. <laughs> and he's still out there. He might be dead in a ravine, for all I know. I don't know. I think if you've gone that long, I feel like you keep riding it out because you've already, you've already killed. Yeah. You've already been hiding for a month or two. Mm-hmm. Like, I think at that point, if you haven't turned yourself in or taken your life after a couple of weeks, I feel like you've got you've gotten into that Joran Vandersloot kind of vibe where right. you're like, "What can I do? What else? Yes, can I cocky. hide? How long can I hide? What?" And it almost seems exciting. Uh, yeah, it's definitely life and death. It's dark, but if you imagine wake up in the morning and you are somebody that is untraceable, yeah. You, nobody can locate you. Uh huh. Here's what it seems. It seems relaxing. <laughs> you think so? I would be on edge constantly. I feel like at least you're like you're you're not on your phone. You're at least spending time like out in nature, probably. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're doing the things that a lot of us need to do. If he didn't do the murder, I would say he could be like a homeopath or something. Right, right. He could open up a thing in Maui. <laughs> yeah, like a CBD shop or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's probably sitting at a bar somewhere in Oklahoma with a mustache and, and shades on, drinking a beer and going, oh, shit, I'm on the news. Yeah. You know, and he's, I bet he's milking it like, how about this fucking psycho, huh? Yeah. And the guy next to him's like, I know, right? Yeah. Hope they catch that guy. He's like, yeah, fuck him. Yeah, yeah. He's probably enjoying it. <laughs> and Halloween, he gets to come party too. Right. He can dress up. Every day is Halloween for him. Yeah. But to be able to one night come down from the hills and freaking let it loose. <laughs> Do Jaeger bombs with a freaking mime. Right, right. You know, just come down and just party, dude. Yeah, Piss both... on a mummy. <laughs> just have fun, man. Halloween was fun. Um, We got some other good questions. What's something else that popped in here, Spence? This, one. this guy's a hunk. Pretty Wouldn't it be great if laundry Mark, just popped up? Theodore. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Hey, hey. This is Alex from Birmingham. Big L. I am just sitting outside listening to the rain because I work from home now, and that's pretty much the excitement of my day. But uh, question for Mark. I was just watching the uh, Chrissy Chaos episode that you were on about five or six months ago, and you were talking about uh, your Seinfeld story. Um how you were opening up for him and then COVID hit and I was just curious what the status of y'all's current relationship <laughs> is have you heard from him in the last five or six months are you going to be uh, working with him again uh, in the future uh, just curious about that uh, I'm also a big Seinfeld fan so um, gang gang Theo I love you uh, y'all keep doing your thing man gang baby love you too brother thank you Uh-oh. people love you people love you Ah, not my dad but <laughs> yeah, yeah, either way, uh, the Seinfeld thing is crazy because uh, 
I was a huge fan. I watched it with my parents growing up, and then now to have his phone number is is bananas. Yeah. But uh, it's almost like the hot girl. I opened for him one weekend. We did four shows. We went out after, had wine, had pizza, tiramisu, best night of my life. And COVID hit, so then everything got weird. And oh. then I kept trying to text him. It's like a girl you fucked once that you're in love with, oh, but yeah. it, the, the relationship just kind of distancing. But you try to keep it going with a text, but it's inevitable. It's not going to last. But uh, I'll text him every now and then, and he'll get back to me. So I'll take it. Yeah. I texted about Norm dying, and he was he had some cool shit to say. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I hate to say it, but sometimes an event happens like that, and you're like, oh, this is a good opportunity to text the big Jew. Yeah, you got to go BJ on that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's interesting how, like, if you get a, somebody's number that's a celebrity or that's popular to you, Yeah. then, like, how nervous you feel. like, And then you also start to recognize how, like, their lives are so busy that they yes. just... It's not that they don't care anything about you. The friendship just picks back up kind of when you see each other again. Exactly. There's just not as much downtime to communicate. Like Yeah, completely. There's just not as much free time as when you were just chilling and you were fucking just didn't have anything to do. Yeah, yeah. And he's a little older, so he's not part of that text generator. Like we'll just text back and forth and he's I think he takes a while to get back to you, you know. He's a thinker also. That's true. So I'm just happy because you know how much power I have? Just having his, I could give that yeah. out. I could call him drunk. I mean, I could do so many bad things. So I'm really trying to be a good, good little boy with his number. Good number shepherd. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes stuff. you like have all the numbers, and then you get drunk and lose one. One, <laughs> one runs down the hill. Oh, there's a six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hope no one knows anything. Yeah. Right. I texted him once drunk, and I, oh. I never did it again because his reaction was kind of like. I could tell it was weird. He was weirded out. But uh, he's cool. He's so normal. He's like us. You know, you, you talk to him. You're like, oh, you're just a dude. Yeah. And we put him up on this uh, weird pedestal, but he's just like us. Yeah. He's just busier and richer. Yeah, and that's so real. I mean, I think at a certain level of, I think, have you noticed anything different about yourself about making money? Have you started to think anything differently or do you notice anything different? I I'm, I'm grew up so kind of poor that it's kind of baked into me, but I'm trying to... Uh, you enjoy the money a little more. Yeah, well, you get yourself something. You get you a little something, maybe an extra, you know, thing of socks or something. Yeah, something like that. do I'm a skiing trip. Are you guys? Are you like? Is there something nice you're gonna do that you kind of are doing? Yeah, me and the lady will go on trips, which I never did. I was like, trips? That's for you know Rockefellers. Yeah. But she's like, no, we we should go, and I and I need her. It's kind of a yin and yang, a little Andrew Yang, and we can go do shit because she'll push me to do right. it, right? And I I need that because it's all coupons in here yeah 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 you got uh, that coupon heart yeah exactly yeah you so. got 40 percent off a orders in there yeah right <laughs> but i'm noticing i go to your house or nate's house or uh tim dylan's house or something like that and you're like all right all right i gotta start enjoying my shit well also i live in a place where houses are affordable mm. you know you could it's like nate and i live in a place where house you know True. If you go to my apartment in L.A., it's as big as this, you know, two of these rooms. Oh, okay. So so it's always interesting for me because I go from having a house here, which is a, it's a nice home, mm -hmm. to going back to my apartment, which is just totally, it's a nice apartment. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a beautiful apartment. Um, but it's like, uh, it's funny because I'll kind of, it's funny because I almost sometimes fit easier into that. Like I, I know. I hate being in a place where those, I feel like extra space, is, I can't use it yes. all. Yes. Dude, I remember the first nights I ever stayed at like an expensive hotel room, dude. Like a suite? With two rooms. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I, st I was like... If I go to bed, I'm wasting the money. Yes, yes. It's like in Castaway where he's laying on the couch and he keeps flicking the light on. Yeah. You don't know what to do with all this this technology and this space. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, so I just stayed up. I was like, at least I might as well stay awake and get yeah, the money's get worth, the money's right? the money's worth. Yeah, totally. So I'm fucking exhausted the next day, but like feeling like I fucking got my value, yeah, you know? Yeah, I'll tell you where, where money is good. Everybody thinks I'll buy a Lamborghini and I'll buy a mansion and I'll buy an Escort or whatever, an iPad. The money is good for little things that, like, okay, let's say you go to the airport and your flight's delayed, and you're like, ah, shit, I'm just sitting here for, like, another six hours now. And then you can go to the sit-down place at the airport, the restaurant, and actually enjoy a meal right. and not, not stress over it for six weeks. Right. That part's nice. We, little things. We can just, like, oh, I'll just buy this and not think about it. Oh, yeah. I forgot my hoodie. 
I'll go buy one. Right. Little things like that. Yeah, that is, you know what? That's a, bad, that, that's a great point. Because I don't think I'd ever get myself fa- anything fancy. No. Like, I got a Ford Ranger truck. Like, right. I, and, you know, I just don't think, I don't know. I just don't think I could fit into it well. Same. Same. But then the problem is we might have kids that end up having money, dude, and then I'm going to fucking hate them. That's true. That's true. Kids need a little struggle. Nothing worse yeah. than a rich kid. Oh. Nightmare. Some t- a lot of times, anyway. Sometimes there's somebody that breaks the norm. That's true. That's true. But also, the rich was my arch nemesis always. It still is kind of like some people will be like, well, you make some money now. It's like, but I'll never be rich. Dude, rich is also an attitude. It's I an think. attitude. Yeah, I don't have that either. You know? It's like my dad's going to bail me out. Right, right. You know? Do you know who my father is? He start throwing money at people and shit. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any of that. Yeah. Like, my dad has liver spots on his arms, okay? <laughs> yeah. So he ain't bailing anybody out of anything, dude. Yes. You know? And he's drunk right now, and he fucking is the one that drove me over here. So <laughs> My dad has the uh, mismatched suit. You know, the blazer and the pants <laughs> yeah. don't match. It's like like dark blue and then like a, like a gray up top. It's bad. Dude, my Short dad... Time. My dad would get so drunk, dude. He would, he would drive. I guess he would drive home and just kind of crash his car. We had like this kind of like really sh- like s- s- slow. Like the gradient was real. It was a real like not a heavy gradient getting uh-huh. into the bottom of this ditch. Uh-huh. So he would just kind of ease his car right into the bottom of it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kind of, I can just finish out the night. <laughs> <laughs> when I did you ever go tubing? In, <laughs> yeah, we went. That was a big deal. Uh, we'd go tubing. Where would I, you guys go in North of Covington? Would you guys go like... Uh, if you said it, I'd know it. On the um, Boga Falaya? Boga, Boga Falaya, something yeah. like that. Boga yeah. Chitta? Boga Chitta, that was it. Yeah. Boga Chitta. Yeah, we'd go there all the time. And uh, one time I was with a girl. Yeah. Dating a girl. And this is a crazy story. We got, of course, you just drink all day on a tube, just yeah. float in the sun. We had sex on a sandbar. Yeah, I've been there. Yes. Yeah, dude. And, uh, there it is, right there. There it is. Yes. Yeah, so, and you remember you go on a school bus and they give you the tube. It's a yeah. whole thing. But sex on a sandbar. I remember it flopped out and hit the sand. I put it back in and she was pissed. Wow. That was an accident. America, dude. That cures <laughs> rabies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you need a little grit. Yeah. And uh, so then we got way too drunk and she had her mom's car and we were driving back and we had a friend in the back seat and he was like, Gun it, gun it, and she gunned it, and then a turn came up out of nowhere, and she flipped the turned the wheel, and we flipped into a ditch, laying you know no. we're upside down where you you unbuckle the seatbelt and you fall. Still drunk? Still drunk? Oh yeah, it's, wow. and it's dark out, and it's in the middle of the woods, and the cops had to come. They had to get a tow truck oh. to get the car out. Y'all and, couldn't flip it over? No, no, it was like in that ditch, like yeah, it was fit in there, that. like a cookie in a cookie pin, yeah, tin, tin. and. uh so the cop came, and I remember she was in a bathing suit still, and she was a Ooh, you know nice. a hot sixteen year old, and her boob was out, Ooh, and uh, you could God. tell all the all these fat you know Louisiana cops like oh, oh I guarantee, and they're fucking <laughs> yeah, wiping yeah, their yeah. brow like they're putting blush on, yeah, yeah, yeah they're, yeah, they're trying not to, t- but it was a full <laughs> nip, and she was crying, <sighs> oh, and they're like they're all it. hard, yeah, they're they're <laughs> loving it, and they're like oh Willie Ray, get over here, get her information, and Willie Ray's like oh shit, and you watch him notice a tit, it was it was fun. <sighs> Oh. We got out of that one, but uh, those were those were young days when you were 16 and just everything just kind of fell into place. It worked out. Yeah, there was something about the pressurelessness of that time, and I think it was just I don't know if that was society. I think it was just that age. It was like like now I think kids are still just kids. The, like the phones and stuff is just part of their yes, thing. Yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. Here's what I hope for. Everybody's all, you know, wokey and annoying and all that. And I think kids, younger kids, see that. And, of course, they're going to go the other way. Yeah. So I think they're going to rebel against that and start saying horrible things again. Yeah. So that's that's my hope. Yeah. I would like to see a little bit of it. Yeah. Because the woke thing is just impossible. The end of it is it's uh, there's no end there's to no it. There's no end. You can't be good at moral enough. Did you see the guy outside of the Sonic the other day who with the the woman or the man who was saying what they were calling me sir inside and the no. guy's like what do you want me to do you know I'm uh-huh. sorry you know Oh no I Can we bring seen that. that up Oh yeah yeah it was This was a Hispanic guy Yeah Your okay. entire staff has been okay. calling me sir Okay okay uh, oh. you want to park 
I, why don't you tell me what we can do now? No, because I, I can do the same thing with you. Okay, okay? but your so, entire I mean, staff has been calling me sir the entire please, time. Okay. This is what obviously about a man. me looks like right. a sir right now? Okay? Okay. Can we please move to the side? No. What? Look, I'm sorry, and I apologize for what happened. Okay, if they did that, or oh, I mean, I, what do you, I mean, I'm sorry. What else can I tell you? I mean, now, what else can I tell you? What? I mean, if you're um, uh, can we please move to the if side? If I'm a what? Can this, move to the side? this person is if just fishing for this guy to fuck. It's just sick. Okay, it's, don't it's try to put bullying. Any, any it's a weird it is. Okay. It's a weird form of bullying. Okay. Man. This guy works at Sonic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, I don't know, maybe an immigrant. If they call you like, a sir, I don't know what they did then. Because they saw the name on my credit card, and they were being, they were not being nice people. Well, I mean, they saw your name on the credit card. What do you want? What do you want, what do you want them to tell you? Right. This is a great question. But that has nothing to do with it. It does. You don't there have could an be answer. Someone in the back that they don't see. That's paying. Okay, ma'am. So why would they intentionally do that? Can you tell me what your location has done to be trans competent? Because clearly they are not. Well, it's just oh, tough because you. He, okay, they made a mistake, and what's should he kill himself? Like, where do we go from here? And right. you know, my name is Mark. You call me Mike. I just I go, yeah, yeah. How you doing? You know, yeah. like I get it. It's this is important to her and all that, and she's trans and whatever. But like, guy, yeah, they fucked up, and it's over now. And he's apologized. Like, what else can you do? Yeah, he goes on to apologize literally eighteen more times, uh. and the person just lamb back. Like it just like it's become this game of like how do I catch someone to feel and that and then and then that makes you feel some type of way. Yeah. That's the sick game I think that I don't understand that much. Like this internet game of like who do I how can I catch like yeah you know who do I catch with a bag of N words over right. here, you know, or like right. uh exactly uh, like how can I go back in your time in your yes. life and see if you wrote down the N word on a napkin. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like uh, in the '90s when I, it was nobody's perfect. Now, if it if you're not perfect, we'll figure it out and ruin your life. Yeah, you know, and it's it's weird because like if you say like retard or something, they'll come after you and they go, "That's in, that's where's your compassion? That's so mean to retards." And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, I get it, but where's your compassion for me right. fucking up?" Where, I mean, you you're you're you you can't have it both ways. If you want compassion, you got to be compassionate too. And it's just a. I'm not yelling it at a retarded person. Right. I'd never do that. No. I'm calling my buddy Ernie retarded. Yes. And we all know Ernie's a fucking tar. <laughs> oh, dude, well, we've been around him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, even his, both of his wives had left him, okay, <laughs> for reasons they didn't want to disclose in court. Jerking off with conditioner. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah. Stings. Which is a child's move. Yeah, come on. At least get the lotion, Ern. Yeah, just sad to see. Yeah, you hate to see it, and- I think eventually it'll things will flip where people will turn on that person. Person, yeah. Yeah, I think enough so where it's just like I also think that whole thing is losing its value, you know? Yeah. It's like um if everything is an 11, nothing is an 11. Right. Right. But the scary part is when the platforms that own our ability to communicate, that's when it gets real scary. Yeah, that's what I was going back to corporations. To the corporations, right. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. People are like, this person's the president, this person's the president. I'm like, AT&T yeah, is the president. Exactly. We owe them money. I don't owe Biden any money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Biden's dude. giving me money, actually. Yeah, oh, <laughs> dude, by their fucking, bro, the government will give anybody money. I now. know, it's the best loan ever. Does money, it almost doesn't even seem real anymore sometimes. No, money is completely just in up in the air poof you know it's on your phone you don't see used to go here here's 20 bucks and it was 20 and you earned it you, yeah there was a thing right now it's just whoop, here you go i just sent you money You're like what do you mean you sent yeah. me money that's the new normal money has no value no meaning you used to mow a lawn and they'd put they put the money in there put it in your pocket you had a you wallet felt the money and you felt some like there was a thing like i did something yes. look what i have exactly now you can't it's just you can't even show it nobody cares there's no no and that doesn't work at a strip club what am i gonna Ven venmo this skank yeah. come on no you put a dollar bill in there soon yeah it used to mean something and yes. you were halfway into the panties when you put I that know. thing in there Woo, that was exciting oh um do you uh has it been tough for you to like since your hour would tap to did you wait to get a whole new hour to go out uh well i was writing a lot while 
having that hour because I was it was getting embarrassing. Like I did that hour for years, and I would go to clubs and they go, "Hey, I like you, man," but I came out last year and did the same shit, and I was like, "Really, ah, you're you?" Right. Well, this I just is like the most prolific. Man. I try to be prolific, but I was really trying to hammer that hour and just really perfect it and hone it. So once I heard one guy say that, it blew my mind, and I changed immediately and just was writing like a machine. But uh, now I have like a new forty-five that's not on anything, and it's 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 cooking. Yeah. But you always got to have that new stuff kind of on the back burner. Yeah. Because when you put you're putting out a thing. Yeah. And are you nervous? Because now you're back to zero. Yeah, I got about, yeah, I'm doing like uh, 50 minutes right now, which is about the amount of time I do. Sometimes I'll do up to an hour. But I think sometimes people also want to go. They want to see you. They want to enjoy it. They want to go back home. Yes. Um, 50 minutes is perfect. But it also depends if the vibe of the show is going great, then it's great. Yeah, yeah. If the vibe's not, then I got to grab some old stuff and kind of put it in. (laughs) You got that right. And, uh... And so that definitely gets kind of scary. And I'm just waiting for like moments that happen where I'm like, oh, I found this is good. This is good. I, know. I can use this. This is going to be perfect, you know. Let's get this uh, Let's get this question right here that came in from Jack Harlow. Harlow, good name. Jack Harlow. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Theo? What's up, Mark? Uh, my name is Tyler from Texas. Um, okay. So there was this HBO show called Talking Funny uh, with oh, yeah. Ricky Gervais, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, and Louis C.K., where they sat down for like an hour-long discussion or whatever. And part of that, they were talking about uh, their different methods for building an hour um, for their act or whether maybe it's going to become a special or whatever. And uh, Jerry Seinfeld uh, took the approach of like, you take about 20%, remove it, and cycle in your new stuff that way. And so over time, your act is this like ever evolving piece. Um, uh, I, I got to see Mark a couple of months ago, and I kind of noticed something similar with his material, where it's like there's definitely like uh, staple jokes of yours, um, as well as like you trying in the new stuff. And uh, it was a great set, by the way. I was curious, is that something that you picked up from Seinfeld, that kind of method of removing a little bit of the old to push in the new? Um, or, you know, what's your general method for building an hour? Um, same question, Theo. Uh, gang, gang. Thanks, guys. Gang, baby. I'll let Mark answer it. Thank you, Tyler, for the for the question, man, and for, for paying attention to the show. What do you think, Mark? Well, first of all, I can't believe anybody cares about stand-up who doesn't do it, which is, it's. I always assume when we go into stand-up, people get bored. Yeah. But maybe not. Maybe not. This guy's, uh, you know, at Comic-Con, apparently. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think he nailed it. It's just kind of the natural progression. You got your your pillars, like, oh, I'll do the, the plant joke, and then I'll do the, the car joke, and these murder every time. So you, you kind of pepper those in like M&Ms and trail mix. Like, Ooh, oh, this is the good yeah. stuff. And then you try your new, and you got your, your half-baked idea. And then when you start losing them, Hit him with another M M&M. and M. Yeah, and then you close with a big M M&M and M at the end. But yeah, eventually, in natural progression, it will the the new stuff will grow and be great, and then you can just start letting go of those M and Ms. Yeah, they just fluff off, and then you got a new hour. But it takes a while. Yeah, it takes a while. It takes a while, and I think that's one thing that's scary about putting stuff out. I think, like, I got this special coming out in, I think, a week and a half or something. But I, I'm also, sometimes I wish, like, man, I think the true value would have been in not putting it out at all mm. and just touring forever. Just touring, right. not just with that material, change my material, but not having, like, these definitive moments yes. where I have to change it. The Jay Leno method. He never put an album out because he was like, I want to keep this. Yeah. Which... I don't know. Maybe there's good, good and bads to both. Like if you put this out, it'll force you to write new shit, which is That's gonna suck. Point. But you have to do it. But if you don't put it out, you can just kind of do it forever. And there's no. Sometimes we need a deadline as comedians. We're a bunch of lazy cucks. Yeah, we are kind of. Huh? I think we can get lazy if we would get lazy because we knew we we're capable of making things happen at the last minute. Exactly. Exactly. That book report, man. You would oh, wing that fucking thing, dude. Wing it, bro. I remember one time it was about. I don't even know what it was about. But I remember taking a bunch of stuff out of our kitchen and putting it in a bowl and then putting like this, like something on top of it. You had to put your hand in there and reach in and grab. It was like literally did it in the morning before school. It didn't make any sense, dude, and got an A. And there'd be like some girl who had like made some shit out of like Fondit or something. (laughs) And Fondit also went to our school, dude. Fondit, uh, 
Bayham. That <laughs> was a girl that went to our school. Found it. Yeah. Bro, the best the best black names I feel like were in Louisiana. I oh like yeah, we had some great ones. But then the last name would be kind of normal. It would be like uh Latrine Williams. Yeah. You know? Bayham, Washington, Wilson. Yes, all presidential. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go figure that out. Yeah. That's where you need to go. Look, if we want to trace some some oh, some lineage yeah. of some real shady shit, man. Let's start calling out people with the last name Truman, <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If there's a Donnie Truman out there right. or freaking Randall Truman, bro, we see you, fam. I know, and George Washington must have been plowing a ton of oh. a- Afro-Americanes because oh. there's so oh, yeah. many named after him. He was like like banging the whole NBA. Yeah, I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah, good for him. Unbelievable. But, yeah. Good for you. I can't wait to. You got a title for it, or is it a secret? The it's special? called Regular People. Ooh, all right, all right, Regular People. I can't wait to watch because I love a special because you get that intro, you get the crowd, I get to see all. I've never seen your whole hour. Yeah. So I'm excited to watch. Thanks, man. Yeah, and yours. People can watch it if they haven't seen it. It's on YouTube. You got that right. Um, out and to dude, lunch. yeah, a lot of ways. Real envious, man. Just the fact that you still own it, man. That's real. There's, there's so much. There's something about that. For me, that's like the biggest thing. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, I could do do anything. I could sell it to Lithuania Television or some shit. Right. You know, get a get a couple paychecks off of it. But it's nice. I can chop it up. Uh, I can do whatever I want with it. It's nice to own. Yeah. Because Netflix, I mean, look, we all love Netflix, but they own your shit, and you get one check, and that's it. Yeah. Which is kind of scary. No residuals, no nothing. Yeah, it's a little scary, man. It's a little scary. And then also the way that things can just disappear right there. That, that things can just disappear so easily on Netflix. Whereas yeah. I feel like if you get a hint of you on YouTube, say somebody watches a clip of you and I, right? Yeah. Then there's a chance they're going to get served this. Whereas on YouTube, on Netflix. Right. I'm not in a bunch of stuff on Netflix. Mm. So it's not like you're going to see me and then they're going to say, suggest this. Yeah. And if you don't get suggested something, you, there's, you never find it. It's over. Yeah. Netflix is a real grab bag. You know what's weird about Netflix, too, is you go to your friend's house and you're scrolling through his. You're like, none of these shows are on mine. What the hell's all this? Yeah. Because they put you in this algo and then yeah. you got a whole different algo. Yeah. It's weird. It's like going through your friend's cupboard. You're like, damn, I never heard of, uh, you know, Twisty Fruits. Yeah. But- that's in your world. And you go back to my world, and it's Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we're all in different algorithms, but there's not that. It's like, um, that's the thing. We're all falling into these algorithms. That's the presidents, man. Those uh-huh. are the presidents of the corporations, man. It really is. That's it. Yeah. It's like it's going to become like, oh, we were algorithm buddies or something. Like, yeah. that's going to be a term one day. Yeah. Like, dude, we were freaking algo babies. We, you know, both of our moms were in the same algorithm. Yeah, that's true. Like, let me read your algorithm. Somebody will literally read someone's algorithm and predict their future, which will be so easy to do. Yeah. They said, uh, Sam Harris said, your phone knows you're gay before you do. Wow. And it's true because it'll it'll notice like, oh, you you stopped on this uh, hot guy picture for longer than you stopped on the hot yeah. girl or whatever. So Yeah, maybe you'll decorate your room with this pink sea salt, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, my girl, she, you know, it's hard to buy presents for your girlfriend because you don't know what the hell they want and you don't want to fuck oh, it up. Yeah. But her phone goes, you, you'll like this. And I'm like, I need to get in tune with her phone to know what the, the, the gift is. Yeah. The phone knows her better than I know her. I can't get her off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That vibration, though. She puts oh. it down there and calls herself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's look at, uh, let's get a couple more questions that came in from Mark, man, and then we'll send him on his way. You got a handsome fan base, I got to tell you. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, we got a lot of great people, man. We got a lot of great people. Just hit the road, dude. It's so crazy to see people come out. Isn't that crazy to see people start to come out? Crazy. And you want to give everybody their time. Oh, you want to give everybody. It's you like can't. you want to thank. It's like you want to thank them so much. I like know. you, you just. Oh, it, it's it hard, and world. it feels exhausting. Yeah, yeah. You're That's like, tough. I've been waiting so. I've been trying my since I was fucking yes. nine years old yes. to make you laugh, and finally here you and I are. Yeah, totally. And then, then you go hide in the green room. Yeah, yeah. This is the <laughs> yeah, weirdest. Yeah. Weirdest thing, but that's how it is. 
Look at the eyebrows. Theo, Mark, what's up, boys? How's it going? Uh, Theo, saw you out in Cedar Rapids last year. Uh, Dang, killer show, and it was great meeting you, man. Mark, longtime listener of Tuesdays with Stories. Love the pod. Hey, no hey. homo. Um, my question for you guys is, what's the craziest heckler story you've ever had? Ooh. And I'm not talking just like, you know, some banter back and forth. I'm talking about like, got pissed, rushed the stage, etc. Um, I've never heard that asked on here before, and I uh, just wanted to know. Thanks, guys. Love you both. Mm. Cheers, brother. Thank you. That's a classic. That's a good one. You got one? Well, I've had so many bad heckles, uh, but the one that really fucked me up was I was doing a, I was kind of new. I was probably like three, four years in. I got a college gig, which was huge. Yeah. Good money, fly you down, put you up. And it was in Florida, and it was called Florida Atlantic. It was an all black school, which I didn't know, but I don't give a shit. Yeah. So I show up, and I had to follow a uh, rap group. It was like kind of a talent night. Ooh. I had to follow a rap group, and they were like twirling shirts going, kill Whitey, fuck the cops, I'll yeah. kill you, you know, fuck this bitch or whatever. And they're killing. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the whole place is jumping. Yeah, yeah. It was the DNC, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember there was like a little cute, nerdy black girl with a clipboard going, okay, you're next. And I just want to let you know it's very diverse. Like, it's not diverse. It's all black. <laughs> yeah, I'm the diversity. Yeah, 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 yeah. But whatever. So... It was me and this other kid, and we were both supposed to do 30 minutes. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, these people don't want 30 minutes of one guy. So he goes up first, and they trash him immediately, and he gets off after like a minute and a half. And I was like, what are you, crazy? You got to do your time at least. So he's like, fuck this. I'm out of here. I'm calling my agent. He was like a – he had self-esteem, this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then I'm like, all right. And then they bring me up like, oh, we got another live one coming up. Oh, baby. And they, they, he's looking at me like, oh, this guy's a goner. Like, I, totally set up for failure. So I walk on stage, and I'm walking to the mic. The mic is like right where that camera is, and I haven't gotten there yet. And some guy goes, look at this fag. <laughs> kills. Kills. It, huge laugh. So I was like, all right, all right, I can handle this. So I was in such a New York state of mind. I was like. Damn, man, what if I was actually gay? And he goes, no, no, you are. <laughs> that got an applause break. He's getting high-fived. They're crowd surfing this guy. He's a hero. And then I try to do 20 minutes uh, on Uber after that, and they, I just ate my lunch for <laughs> half an hour. But I did my time. Yes. Yeah, but it was brutal, man. That was a, I was just watching my watch <sighs> tick. Long oh. half hour. Long 30. Like the Irishman. Why do you think? Oh, the Irishman's unbelievably bad. So does, long. Does it even make any fucking the, or the departed or whatever? I don't even know the difference between the two. Of them. The fucking shit's horrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? Yeah. Uh, some of it's so fucking bad. Um, I would rather watch that guy Sheamus from WWE wrestle. <laughs> that seems more authentic to, right. to the Irish mafia. <laughs> um, but dude, why is it that comedians can take that fucking what that thing? Because that's for some people that would kill them. That would put them into a mental breakdown. That's true. I think because we have our our mind is already so mean to us, so we're like, oh, I can handle this. And they were kind of laughing. So in a weird way, I was like, they're trashing me. I'm the punching bag. But at least I'm creating entertainment, even though I am the butt of the joke. We're all having a good time. I mean, I'm not, but they are. Right. So there's a part of me that like, all right, at least this is kind of fun for them. But it was it was harsh. Yeah, even though I'm the butt of the joke, at least they're having a good time. Yeah, like if I wasn't there, they wouldn't be laughing. Right. And it's they're mocking me, and it hurt. But at least I'm a part of something. Yeah. So I, I took it. Yeah, man. I uh I had one like that University of North Florida. They booed us off the stage. They booed me off the stage. They didn't know I had to come back out in Florida. Yeah. They didn't know I had to come back out between each. It was a battle of the bands. Oh yeah. They didn't know how to come back out again between each band. I oh. burned all my I was supposed to do five minutes between each band, right? I told them I had forty minutes, bro. Yeah. I had fucking <laughs> eighteen minutes. Woo. I burned it all out of the first time and I had to come back out fucking like six more times. Oh my god. You just gotta start riffing. What what is that? A clock over there? Yeah. Holy hell. Oh, it became a running gag when I ran at least about the third time, the fourth time, it was like, No way this dude's back. <laughs> I actually physically became the joke. There was one time in they used to have this room in LA called um it was like at a ca a bar cafe in UCLA in Westwood. Mm. It was like uh college kids are ruthless. Yeah, and it was UCLA bar. So there's no chick. It's a uh, it's a sad environment uh -huh. for like compared to what college most college kids are used to. Yeah. So one kid starts tackling me in the audience, dude. He's talking shit, right? I got just lost it, man. I get off stage. Uh -oh. I'm coming at the dude. Start choking him. 
What? Yeah, choking the guy. Wow. And I realized I had the mic in my hand the whole time. I'm choking him, right? Yeah. Ah, you could hear the swallowing. Oh, yeah, you could hear it all. It's crazy. And I'm like, why were you being so mean to me? Just the fucking lamest <laughs> thing you could say to somebody. Yeah. But that was – that. And people were dying laughing because he and I were tussling, but uh, the mic uh, is right there. Good for you. But I had one similar – Hartford Funny Bone. This is years ago. It was probably like – 25 people in the room. I'm eating my ass. This guy is in the front row. I'm talking a real nerd guy, like <laughs> fat guy with glasses and a beard. And he had a woman with him and another, like a sister and his cousin or something. And he's just, this guy is like a loser. And I'm bombing. And they keep doing the thing where they mimic my bomb. Like I'd be like, oh, Mick Ultra, huh? And that's the punchline. You go, Mick Ultra. Whew, that was bad. And then I'd be like, well, what about uh, Shag Carpet? He's like, Shag Carpet, nothing there, you know? And I, it was, no one could hear it but me. Yeah. So he was like taunting oh. me. So I just lost it on this guy. And I was like, fuck you, you piece of shit. And apparently he was like kind of downsy or something. So maybe he was not fucking with me. Maybe he was just being retarded or something. Yeah. And I, but I didn't know that. And I kept going at him, and it, this is this is when it gets really bad. When you're like, "Fuck you!" and I just got angry. It wasn't even funny. And this yeah. guy in the back goes, "Go easy on him." <laughs> so I go, "Well, fuck you too. What the hell? I'm up here alone." Blah blah blah. So eventually, the guy got up. the The retarded guy got up and was like, "What the fuck?" And I was like, "Oh shit! This guy's all you know, a little little yeah. melted." And I was like, "Oh shit! Uh, all right, <laughs> well, what are you gonna do?" And they threw the kid out, and they had to throw him out, and like. He was like kind of moaning and stuff. Oh, oh it was bad. On, what? And then I had I had like another twenty to do after that. It was a nightmare. So now oh. the other crowd hates me because I I shit on them. It was You're going to hell, man. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, you but, didn't know. And that, look, I had the same thing happen, man. Um, that's a very good story, and it's better than mine. But I'm still going to tell mine. Please. I'm in San Francisco, and it's at like a weed conference or something, mm. right? And I don't even smoke weed. So I'm at the place, people are blowing weed, smoke in the air and stuff. And so yeah. I start getting just zooted out on stage, bro. There's a guy dressed, it's like the San Francisco Weed Conference. There's just some, 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 some it was bad. Yeah. Um, was this pre-legal or, or legalized It was weed? pre-legal. Okay. So weed was still a, a yeah. big deal. There were like booths, there was like THC stuff, uh -huh. but it was still, they were pushing the limits. Right. And some guy was dressed like a captain, like a total captain, brings me on stage. At that point, I am so cooked out of my gizzard. Like, the whole people have just been blowing joints. It's the, I'm the last act of the day. It's been an all-day affair. Uh -huh. There's a, probably 13 people in a room that would seat maybe 150. Oh, boy. All just folding chairs. The guy in the front is mentally disabled, right? <sighs> Nobody tells me. Yeah. Nobody tells me. I get up there. I didn't. Need, I literally didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know that I was a comedian. I didn't know what was Whoa, happening. Oh, you were I that high. I didn't know if I was an auctioneer. I didn't know what wow. was happening. Man. It was not good, right? And this guy starts saying stuff, messing with me. And um, finally, somebody yells out. Could have even been you. Yells out, that guy's retarded, right? <laughs> and I was like, well, put a sign on him then. <laughs> you know, right? That's a good line. And then finally... It was the first laughs I got, dude. Uh, <laughs> and I quit. I got down. I was like, I'm done. I think it had literally been four minutes, dude. Uh, but when you're high, four minutes oh. is like a, a week. I think everybody, the guy there was like, man, you did great, dude. You did great. Oh, paid me good. my money. All right. It that's was a happy an agent. Yeah. They paid me a thousand bucks. Oh, that's big. That was big. Not a bad gig. Just trash this uh, Downsy kid and get a check. Yeah. <laughs> but dude. It could be worse. I think it was Bobby Hebert. <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. Oh, deep cut. He passed away, didn't he? Yeah, he did. God, that was crazy. In New Orleans, he was every mom's hunk. Like he was like oh. the guy all the moms like. Camilla Red Beans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't. I love they had the coach for kids that kick like. You don't need a coat in New Orleans. Like we're yeah. doing coats for kids. Every time we kick a field goal, we get a, every kid. Every kid gets a I coat. Never thought about that. You're right. It was like who needs a coat? Who needs a coat? Need a meal yeah. and a hug. I saw Morris Bart uh, was still going. Yeah, it's crazy. Is he really? Yeah, see the the billboard. He runs that town. Wow. I'm on your side. One yeah. call, that's all. Chip for stall. You ever see those? Oh Takes yeah. Care of it all. Yeah. How about My stepdad used to work for him. Door furniture or 1825 Tulane. Wow. Now we're doing local commercials. This yeah, is too, dude. That was fun, though. And remember they had uh, Morgus Presents? Did you ever see that? Yes. Or not? Yes. That was big. Chop Slee. <laughs> wow. Bring up Morgus Presents. Let's get a picture of it so yeah. people know. 
This was pre-internet entertainment. Bro, you know who you got to go see? Suicide Boys, man. Who's that? They're this New Orleans, like, uh, they have, they're this New Orleans, it's kind of a rack, rap, rock, it's their mm. own thing, man. Really? Yeah, they're All great, right. though. Yeah, let's see Morgus Presents. This right was like there. PBS Click on or, that picture. what do you call it, public access. Yeah. I didn't, I had to leave New Orleans to realize it was a small town. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't realize when you got somewhere else, you're like, oh, they don't even have that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Louisiana was nice. That was one thing that was nice about it. everything kind of had their own shows. Every area in town had their yep. own things. Yep. That's another thing that's kind of a bummer about everything getting so commercialized. Just I so, oh, like, you know, there's just no more, like, small chains. It just, all of it kind of goes by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. Remember, like, getting a job at the at the Robears? I was yeah. a bag boy. Like, that's over. I don't know. We went Christmas caroling. We went uh, trick-or-treating. It just feels like that's all kind of old now, antiquated. Yeah, it feels like some things are just, uh, like, some of the fabric of society has come unwoven. I completely agree. And I don't know how and why. And it makes you feel like your life doesn't mean as much because you had really invested in kind of the template of what mm. everything was, you know? Yeah, now meaning is clicks and followers and likes. And now everything is racist. Like, every book now is like, why this was racist, oh, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's just like, you know, Frederick Douglass was racist. I saw the other day a book. <laughs> really? And I'm like, what? Damn. What is, how, what? Like, when is that going to end? I know. Wow, yeah. Well, it's it's like you said, you got to have a gotcha on somebody. It's like a kill, you know? Yeah. And you you want a big kill. You want to take down uh, Louis or whoever. It's got to be Buck. a big kill. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough, you know? Nobody wants to build you. They just want to tear down shit now. Right. It's way easier. It is way easier. Yeah, we got to fight. We got to do our best, man. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. Well, you I know? think we're out there. I think people like us who just kind of want to live and have relationships and uh, connect i think we're out there yeah i think that's the majority actually i do too i think the, the a lot of those people probably there's just not they're just not busy doing all of that shit that other people are doing yeah yeah and that's way healthier yeah it is you know sometimes you're on twitter and you just get wrapped up in this shit oh. then i go see my brother he's got two kids and he's pushing them on a swing and yeah i'm like oh yeah and he's not thinking about this no he's worried about his kids getting uh pudding yeah yeah, most people are living. Yeah, when you get outside of this, most people are living in a pretty regular universe, man. Yeah, yeah. We just we we can't forget that. Um, let's get this last question that came in here, Mark, and we'll send you on your way. You got how many shows you got this weekend? Five, six, six, three Dang. on Saturday, two tomorrow, one Sunday. Is this your first time doing three shows in a night? No, no, I've been doing that a while. But wow. if you want to pop by, I don't know if you're busy. Um, no pressure. I appreciate it. I am. You you have one on Sunday too? Yeah. Uh, maybe six I'll, maybe I'll try to make that one. No pressure. Because I got uh, I'm heading out of town tomorrow. Oh, okay. But what's up, guys? My name is Jake. I'm out here in Houston. Mark, I saw you last time you were out here. It was a great show. Traveling like y'all do, I'm wondering, <laughs> what's the weirdest proposition that you've gotten from a fan? Mm. Not like a come to my hotel room, come to the bar. I'm thinking more like. Have you ever gotten something like someone's like come to my apartment and bottle feed me or something weird? Oh, Anyways, like an just curious. Gang, How would gang. an animal even ask you that? <laughs> Interesting. That's a good question. I've I've had definitely had the swingers like, hey, we swing if yeah. you're interested, blah blah blah. But uh, the craziest thing was one guy was like, I live out on a lake in a cabin. In a cabin. I try to say cabin and cottage, and I said cabbage Cut. but uh <laughs> lived on a cabin in the lake and he's like come out here uh, i'll pick you up from the airport it's like a three-hour drive fly in early we'll fish we'll grill it up we'll watch movies and i'm like dude this is a lot i wouldn't do this yeah. with my my aunt right and you want me to do it i've never met you yeah. you know and i i know they listen to a lot of pods so they think they know you but i'm like that sounds like a nightmare yeah but yes extensive people offer you extensive things come in a few days early yeah you know, let's live it up, man. <laughs> yeah. We'll do something chill, man. We'll get a bounce house. Right, right. You know, we'll hit the grocery. You're like, this yes. is sounding. This is too intimate. Yeah, it's too, some of it's too intimate. Yeah, and it's nice. You're like, oh, that's sweet, but I would, that would be work. 
Yeah. Just the car ride from the airport to your three-hour <laughs> cabin is like, damn, what are we going to talk about? That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the shit like that is tough, but it's also flattering. Right. Yeah, it is flattering that somebody would be brave enough to spend that much time with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I think I'm kind of jealous because I would assume no one would want to hang out with me. But they're like, oh, he'll want to go. Right. I'm like, what kind of mindset is that? Do you think people want to go hang out with you? Yeah. And then your time gets so busy you're doing the shows because people want to see the show. Right. That then you don't have as much free time as you used to. Exactly. And then you got to do your gym. You got to do your, your solo pod or whatever it is. So It's all such a... It's life, man. It's just where we are. Yeah, yeah. And it could be worse. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not, yeah, and I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to examine it. Yeah. And sometimes the examination is, um, you know, you have to just be honest about the examination, even if, uh, even whether things are going good or not good. You still mm-hmm. want to try and get a, be able to look at things. Yeah, here, here. You yeah. got to, what do you call that, dissect and analyze all the time. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're just a couple of formaldehyde frogs out here, man. Oh, you got that right. Boy, remember that shit where you cut that open in class? Oh, yeah. That and try to fun. get the hot girl in your group, but then you realize how gross it was what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Woo. That was better, though, because at least you weren't writing or reading. You yeah. Know, at least it was weird to cut up on that pig, but it broke up the day a little bit. Yeah, it was kind of an icebreaker, too. Mm-hmm. My teacher, I remember, was dipping when we did that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that was some real Louisiana shit. We had a teacher that got busted for um, homosexuality, actually. Ooh, but uh, that was a crime. But he, uh, his replacement came in during the pig cutting. So, like, second day of pig cutting, we got a new guy. Damn. And it's this bald-headed, huge guy. And he literally was drinking a fucking, like, four-gallon jug of kombucha mushroom juice and no one had ever heard of it and he's like what? i'm telling you this shit will save lives <laughs> and we're like this guy's fucking insane this guy's dude. Just starts eating the pig <laughs> oh, bro. yeah it's crazy bro the pig he touches them they start coming back to life <laughs> but it blew our minds and we'd never heard of it and then for 10 years i didn't hear it t- right t- and then it was like the biggest thing in the world but this dude i gotta find that guy and figure out how did he learn about that let's get him on the pod because that dude was sipping heavy yeah I I did shrooms last night. Yeah? Yeah. How New was Orleans. the experience? Good? I love shroom. I think it's the best drug. Yeah. It's a popular drug, man. Um, I've thought about uh, using it to try and get off of antidepressants. You know, That's doing the microdosing. The micro, yeah. It works. It helps the euphoria. Yeah. I've had friends that have had success with it. Because um, I'm sick of being addicted to like, just like, even antidepressants. Like, I started taking these bitches a day. De- like, I don't even know what I'm taking. Like, yeah. Am I better? I know. Every doctor you go see, they're just like, oh, just keep taking them. You're taking them, just keep taking them. See, that's scary. Yeah. But you seem fine. I mean, I don't know what's going on in the in the personal life. but I feel okay. I think I just, uh, but you wonder, like, how long, you know. Yeah. Does it ever click and you go, I don't need them anymore. Right. My dad was the scary dad growing up. You know, big forearms and he'd give you one of these if uh. you act up. Scary dad. And he started taking antidepressants when I was in college. Ray of Sunshine. Wow. So weird. He's like, how are you? He changes his tone and everything, and you're like, you know, you still flinch because he was so scary, but uh, it it 180'd him. Totally different guy. Damn. It's weird. It's almost kind of like, who's this guy? Right. That's the thing. Yeah, you're like, sometimes that's like, I feel like I, I'm, uh, like there's thoughts and ideas, and like sometimes I think because re- in relationships, I'm unable to connect sometimes. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes I'm not able to have certain feelings Yeah. because the medicine kind of just leaves you in the middle. Yes. So it's like you don't really get the feelings you need to create love, which are highs and lows, I think. You need the high and low. I mean, Norm always said that. He was wildly depressed, and people say, you want some pills? He said, no, I, you got to experience the whole thing, wow. even though it sucks. Yeah. Well, we're out here experiencing it, man. Um, out to lunch, right? You got it. You can check out the special on YouTube. Please go check it out if you haven't. And uh, Mark Norman touring and changing his life, dude, and owning <laughs> his stuff while he does it, man. You got that right. You got to own, like slavery. Yeah, <laughs> if it even happened. That's true. I think it's a hoax. They never found the boats, you know. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> The Holocaust wasn't real. That's, uh, that's uh, Mark, Norman. Uh, Mark Norman, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to be here, Fatty. Praise Allah. I'll see you on the road. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Hey, all right. Fun app.